I've clicked onto the Global Tropical Area for February the 21st, 2024. As is always the case in these videos, the flood text pressure are mine alone, and when making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look to your local weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So we've got our same two systems to talk about today. We've got Tropical Storm Eleanor in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and we've also got Ex-Tropical Cyclone Lincoln, which is likely to develop off the coastline of Western Australia as it goes out the course of this week. But that'll be towards the end of the video. I'll leave a timestamp so you can skip ahead to that if you need to. But we're going to start off with a Leonor like we did yesterday. And the system, at first glance, looks fairly healthy. You can see on the satellite loop, we have a pretty healthy burst of deep convection here on the western side of this map. But it's a bit hard to tell, but this system is pretty disorganized right now. And to get the full picture, I'm going to show you some uh, other plots. Uh, one is the microwave pass this morning. Remember, I showed one yesterday morning and the look of that was a little bit more concerning we had convection wrapping around the center and we had potentially an eye forming which could have alluded to some significant intensification unfortunately for us that did not happen and the storm has been struggling over the past several hours in the face of some pretty strong shear even stronger than some models had anticipated you can see from this microwave pass it here's all that deep convection that i noted there on the satellite imagery and it's can be a little bit hard to decipher where the low level center is but if you look at some of these blue streaks these light blue streaks you can see they're sort of curling uh in more of a clockwise manner if you will and this can imply that the low level center is somewhere here and looking at the infrared loop it looks like this it's about right you can see it's a bit hard to see, but you have to kind of focus your eyes in on this region here. But we have some northwesterly flow here, well northeast of the edge of the convection. And it looks like it wraps around maybe into north easterly flow here, southeast of the edge of the convection. And this sort of implies a similar position that I pointed out there on microwave for the low level center. And this is much more disorganized than yesterday. And you can see this even better in the HAFS model. This is the relative humidity plot across the mid-level. So you can see the contours uh, being the surface pressure. So you have the surface low here. And the wind barbs are the mid-level winds, not at the surface, a little bit off the ground. And it might be a little bit hard to decipher, but the mid-level low is within this convection, more specifically right about here uh, within that convection, tilted to the northeast with height uh, on uh, the, the the model here and this is apparent in real time and this was something that was discussed last night the Haas model had seen this last night and now here we are with that pattern actually taking shape so this is some good news because now we talked about yesterday with the GFS ensemble plot that the consensus was there were two envelopes a stronger storm would make the southward turn quicker and be potentially more of a significant threat to Mauritius, while a weaker storm like we have this morning uh, would likely take a bit longer to make that southward turn and would likely end up further east of the island. Because of the trends that we've seen over the night hours, the system is now likely to, to stay east of Mauritius uh, today, at least on current trends. Now, keep in mind, the storm is not a fine point. It is still pretty big. I showed you the wind field last night, or early, or sorry, yesterday morning on the forecast cut from Mateo, France. So while the center track has been our friend uh, today, the overall idea of the storm not impacting Mauritius is still fairly unlikely. I think that we are still going to get some impacts in Mauritius. And in fact, we do still have alerts in place in the island of Mauritius as the system does come south. Now, the main question as the system does come further south is what exactly does it do from this point on? We already have a tilted structure. It's pretty disorganized right now, but is it able to fend off some of the shear uh, that is going to be brought on it as it moves towards the south? Here's the upper level wind plot from the halves. And once again, like I've talked about over the past couple of days, here's your upper ridge here placed east of the storm. This is what's helping it turn towards the south. And you can see all this blue aloft. And this is bringing that shear that we have right now. And this is going to continue shearing it over the next couple of days as it moves towards the south. The question 
here will be, can the system manage to surround itself in a deep moisture bubble, get convection going over the center, maybe vertically stack itself, and could it intensify at that point, potentially still up to cyclone strength? And that still remains to be seen, but there are some factors that may help it. Uh, one is, uh, we talked about this jet way down south of the storm associated with this upper trough here south of Madagascar. And this could be something that helps the storm out for intensification. It is pretty far south. This is not the most optimal position for a jet interaction, but you do still see all these winds eventually converging into this enhanced region of flow well south of the storm. And if the storm manages to vertically align itself, this could allow it to intensify a little bit. Now, in terms of rapid intensification, I'd say that those odds have decreased quite significantly over the past day. But the main key message today for Mauritius is that, yes, the center track has been our friend over the course of the night hours, but the threat is still here for a potential impact to the island. So don't fully... You know, take your guard down and don't start taking down preparations. Keep them up as we do still look at you know the potential for some significant impacts here. You can see the rainfall uh, product here from the HAPS model. Then the HAPS is one of the more eastern models here. The GFS and European are still further west, and you can see the GFS here still having the storm center come right here over or just east of the island of Mauritius. And if this does happen, you could potentially get still pretty strong winds. And you see this heavy rain band associated with the storm on this run. If it does track further west, this could put that right over the island and that could lead to some flooding issues amongst the motion issue issues from higher surf and potentially some storm surge along the immediate coastline. So there is still a threat here. And we do have a class two cyclone warning in place for Mauritius. This will likely uh, continue on over the course of the forecast period. And I'll leave a link to this website so you can click onto it and go to the latest information from the Mauritius Meteorological Services. And you can also get it in your language, whether that's English, French. Uh, I think they also have another one um, as, as well. Yeah. So you can get it in your language and you can stay ahead of the storm and know what warning is in place. Here's a forecast cone from Matteo France and La Reunion. You can see their forecast has been following the consensus, turning towards the east. Uh, but keep in mind, this track cone of uncertainty here is, like I said yesterday, where the center could track. And if it does come further west, uh, like I talked about on the GFS and European model, we could potentially still get some heavy rainfall and some gusty winds. I'll put on some of the uh, wind fields here, and you can see that the system is pretty significantly sized here, and only a small shift to the west from the center track could have some of these stronger winds coming over the island, and that could absolutely cause some issues, and that could cause some damage, potentially some trees down and power outages along the island. So make sure you stay tuned to your local weather office, the, the, the the Mauritius Meteorological Service. Again, I'll leave a link to their website in the description. And stay tuned to Matteo France as they're going to continue issuing advisories on the system as it approaches. Now, you may look at this forecast cone and wonder uh, what's going on towards the south of uh, Mauritius and La Reunion. You sort of see it make this loop back towards the west. And this is an idea that models are continuing to show. You can see that this is the 500 millibar height map from the GFS and what we're having is this big ridge building to the south of the storm as it's coming south so this it's going to block it from coming south uh, and this is going to make it turn back towards the west here and this could potentially bring some impacts maybe to La Reunion even though the track in short term has shifted east we're now still potentially looking at some impacts as it sort of hooks around here in the latter half of the forecast. Now, the good news is the water temperatures go downhill pretty quickly south of the islands, and most models are showing it getting it getting pretty far south, close to these 26 and 27 degrees Celsius waters. This is pretty unfavorable for a storm, and alongside that, as a storm is slowing down, if we look at the tuna millibar, the upper level wind plot here uh, at, at tuna millibars, you can see as a storm is slowing down, 
Keep in mind this ridge is building to the south, so this is now slowing it down. It's really not moving too much, and eventually it's going to start moving west. But aloft, we still got from this upper ridge all this strong westerly flow aloft, and this is going to shear off all the thunderstorms away from it. And it's likely just going to leave a naked swirl uh, over the a course of the, of the latter half of the forecast period. And in terms of any potential for intensification, redevelopment, any sorts of that as it comes west, right now I don't think it's all too likely. You can see as we get to the latter half of the forecast on this map here, we have this little trough here in the upper levels digging in, and this just keeps this belt of westerly flow over the storm, and sea surface temperatures here are still pretty marginal. So I wouldn't expect anything too significant, but there could be some potential maybe for some enhanced rainfall across the region, maybe some outer bands, especially if it takes maybe the northern end of this cone. And especially with the high topography of La Reunion, you could get some heavier rainfall there, but nothing significant here on the models. And this will likely not be intensifying much at all when it comes further uh, towards the west. All right, we're now going to move to the Australian region as we have what was Tropical Cyclone Lincoln still here over northern Australia. The system has continued moving west and is now almost off the coast here. You can see it's positioned there, just on the coastline of Western Australia. And the system looks to be a little bit better organized than models like the GFS had depicted. And I talked about yesterday how one of the key things to watch for with Lincoln is how well developed is the low when it comes offshore. I'm going to show you an animation here, and this is the past five runs from the GFS. Uh, as the storm is now off the coast or just on the coastline. And what you'll notice is the storm has been getting a little bit more concentrated. It's been the center on the GFS has been a little bit stronger than the model had anticipated beforehand. So now we have, you know, the GFS trying to correct to a more strong low here. And it does certainly look to be having an impact. You can already see that the system is having a lot of convection here blow up along the coastline and this is an aspect of having a more well-defined and smaller and compact circulation as you have that it's more efficient at getting moisture off of the ocean you can see there's a lot of dry air back here but as these lows spin around on the ocean they can pick up moisture from the ocean loft that up into the atmosphere and eventually you can get thunderstorms developing and that's what we have right here right along the coastline of western australia the main question for Lincoln is, is it able to keep this up or does it just die to the dry air that is very prevalent here west of it? And you can even see it better here on the water vapor loop. You can see there's really no coloring here well west of the storm, indicating a very dry environment, not even some upper level moisture for it to deal with. It's just dry throughout pretty much the entire column of the atmosphere. And we do still have some differing ideas from the global models on exactly what may occur here. The GFS is still on the idea that the system succumbs to the dry air and just broadens out because the thunderstorms are not there. The system just weakens continuously and it just broadens out to a point where it just never really recovers. And you have just this broad area of low pressure tracking westwards and it really just doesn't get its act together. While on the other hand, the European still shows a fairly strong storm here that could potentially threaten land in western australia and that could be you know a land falling tropical storm or maybe a cyclone here now the environment is favorable for intensification this is the 200 millibar flow plot from the european and you can see we've got this big upper ridge draped across the region and this is indicating a fairly low shear environment there's not much shear uh, to speak of uh, there's may maybe some because there is a strong mid-level ridge here south of the storm but this is helping to track it towards the southwest and it's tracking in the same direction as those winds from that ridge that sure shouldn't be too much so really the main issue is the dry air and whether or not it actually bends off the dry air and keeps up what it's doing right now along the coastline that's just something that we're going to have to watch for over the next few days and it's just you know, I think we watched very closely. Uh, right now, what we can tell you is development into a tropical cyclone, at least from what I'm seeing today, appears more than likely, uh, more, more likely than not, rather. The Bureau of Meteorology agrees. They still give this a high chance of redevelopment. And right now, for timing, we're looking at potential landfall in the far northwestern part of Western Australia as we get into a lot of half of this week and into this weekend. Now, exactly how strong the storm may be, we don't know. Uh, just 
that's just going to have to be watched just with all this dry air. There is potential for an intensifying storm, but there's also the potential that it just falls apart as it comes to the dry air. So make sure you stay tuned to the Bureau of Meteorology for the latest information on the storm as it continues moving back offshore. I'll have more videos over the course of this week and into this weekend as the system continues. But that's all that I've got for today. Stay safe in Mauritius. Again, a Class 2 cyclone warning is in place for Tropical Storm Eleanor, and there may be still a threat of a significant impact to the island if it does get sacked together. So make sure you stay tuned to local emergency management and the Mauritius Mer Meteorological Services, and make sure you have your preparations uh, in place for the storm as it moves through. But I'll have more videos over the course of this week for the storm as well, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching.